Oh, now they hear talk. All of them, when they do fasting and prayer, say, when we finally start to walk, things will be better. Oh, now they hear talk. We finally won't start to walk now. We are hearing that Nigeria not get food on your own. We'll give you the final is when fine. You know, they travel there and tell us that we'll start to walk for October. October not pass, they never start to walk. Why? There is no food oil to supply to them that they want to refine. Meanwhile, Boak uh, refinery they come next year. Uh, Portacot refinery, they tell us to work for December. Kaduna will refinery are going to start working next year. Only Dangote refinery will wait. We never even see crude oil give our first. Where those other refineries come, we have one see crude oil give them. So the country is deciding. The refineries are deciding. That we might have to start importing crude oil to Nigeria that we want to refine. When you calculate the price of importing, the price when you go pay ship, we won't carry and call Nigeria back. How this poor want to go down now? We want to see so much. I'll show you news. According to this post, it's better to tackle challenges against local production, doubt over Port Harcourt facility coming on stream next month, experts force governments holding controlling shares in oil firms. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, may begin importation of 110,000 barrels of crude oil per day from Venezuela or Saudi Arabia to operate the Kaduna refinery due to come on stream next year. Also, the Dangote, Bois, and other refineries may be forced to import about 1.322 million barrels of crude oil per day amid oil production challenges in Nigeria, existing contracts on crude oil swap, as well as other commercial issues. Currently, the Dangote refinery, with 650,000 barrels per day refining capacity, is relying on imported crude, while the Bois refinery within the South-South region would need about 200,000 barrels per day of crude oil from next year. NNPC Limited is also looking to bring back its 445,000 barrels per day refineries between next month and next year, while the existing modular refineries will require 27,000 barrels per day. Nigeria has been struggling to sustain its crude oil production. The country currently records 113.52 million barrels shortfall in meeting organization of petroleum exporting countries output quota. The loss alone is about $8.9 billion in the first seven months of 2023, while OPEC's production quota allocated to Nigeria stands at about 1.742 million barrels per day. Figures from the Nigeria Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission showed that output has been averaging about 1.1 million barrels per day. The NNPC Limited is with current obligations to supply crude to contractors, but the recent borrowing of $3 billion from Afrexim Bank would drastically reduce the volume of crude the national oil company could provide to the local market. The Nigerian Upstream Regulatory Commission is currently dragging oil producers in an attempt to enforce Section 109 of the Petroleum Industry Act, which introduced domestic crude supply obligations to Nigeria's oil industry to ensure domestic refineries are not starved of crude oil supply. Although the regulator is threatening a fine of $10,000 penalty of 50% of their fiscal price per barrel of crude oil not delivered to refineries and denial of export permits, many of the crude oil producers are worried over commercial issues that may come up with such a transaction. They are concerned about the logistic side of supply and safety of their data with Nigerian Union of Petroleum Regulatory Commission. They added that refiners would need to convince them that the off-takers have dollars to pay for crude oil sustainably. Besides, most of the producers are divesting owing to crude oil theft, insecurity in the Niger Delta region, and other problems bedeviling the oil and gas sector. The renowned energy expert, Dan Kumli, said crude oil importation would not be ruled out next year for NMPC Limited owned refineries because the daily local production is being hampered by poor investment. As long as the federal government continues to hold controlling shares in all the petroleum companies in Nigeria, there will be no crude oil and gas. Once the assets are transferred to private sector investors, the industry will shape up, Kunle said. He alluded to the fact that the country's product pipelines are very weak and long out of use. There are too many cross-cutting issues in the infrastructural framework. It is very highly likely 
that the Potter Court Refinery may not resume operations, he said. He noted that there is a huge local add-on cost to a litre of petroleum products owing to inefficient and unreliable infrastructural facilities to support movements of products. Energy economist Professor Wumi Iledari stated that the coming on stream of Kaduna refinery and others was gratifying. According to him, refineries are designed for a crude oil type and product needs. Therefore, the Kaduna refinery being designed for a heavy crude type would need import from Venezuela and Saudi Arabia for bitumen and heavy fuel, which are for industrial use. According to him, the road and pipeline infrastructure will be a major challenge for the coming on stream of the Portacot refinery. I have a strong disposition to believe there are ongoing efforts to rehabilitate the roads and pipelines infrastructure to facilitate product distribution. There just has to be a credible plan to do just that if value is to be created from the refinery rehabilitation investments. Iledari said, Former president of the Shattered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria and professor of economics at Babcock University, Shagun Ajibola, is worried over sustainability of supply to Kaduna refinery and the profitability if the import should keep coming from Saudi Arabia or Venezuela. The cost of production, according to him, may become unrealistic, thereby impacting the sale at the pump. So basically, the issue that we get now is that we don't get enough crude oil when we want to sell, give our refineries for Nigeria, maybe if it's a refined, give us oil. Let's break down the mass. Nigeria exports crude oil, we know. But what is the capacity of crude oil we can export? And what is the capacity of crude oil we are exporting? Now, two different things. The capacity of water when they are where, when you feed drop. And the one where you get power enough, when you they drop. So your way be full, may you not get power enough to draw water. So now, Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries are requesting 1.7 million barrels of crude oil per day from Nigeria. Now, the refinery is what we get. When go, we go don't get by next year, assuming, say, all of them don't the work. Dangote Refinery, Bois Refinery, Kaduna Refinery, Wari Refinery, and Portakos Refinery has the capacity so if I 1.3 million barrels of crude oil per day, that means we need to supply the 1.3 million barrels of crude oil, then we need 1.7 million barrels of crude oil where we want to export. According to the output allocated to Nigeria by OPEC, that means in total, Nigeria needs to be able to drill 3 million barrels of crude oil per day. What is the amount of crude oil we are drilling now? As we are talking to you, Nigeria is only able to get 1.1 million barrels of crude oil per day. So in one way we will get now, never reach the 1.7 million when OPEC they ask. Not to talk about the ones who won't give our refineries. Now the, another problem is that Federal government will borrow three billion dollars. When they they pay for with crude oil? So the money they borrow will not be said will they pay money back. Will they use crude oil to pay? So, the small one we will do now if they say we they use our pay. So, these refineries are finding themselves at a point where they need to import the crude oil when they go refine. That's why now, even the crude oil where we they do, the one where they did thief for Niger Delta Night Plenty Pass, the amount of stolen crude oil per day is about $8 billion in the last seven months. So, they will not be drilling off. That they thief some and guess who they thief are not be local people. Oh, you more people now get the ship and the companies so they all thief of our country. Can you see the problems we are having now? Even when we come, even import the crude oil, when the crude oil land for Lagos Wharf, I want to reach the refineries. Our pipelines are bad, we have to carry them on truck by road to those refineries, and our roads are also bad. You the hear that? We the hear that? Say today, uh, tanker drivers say that they kidnap their drivers. That they do this. That they do that. So everywhere is not safe in the country. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the problem we have now. These are our Nigeria, what we they call crude oil exporting nation. We are now becoming a nation who have to import crude oil that we have to refine. We cannot even supply our own refineries crude oil because government cannot secure our pipelines. Government cannot drill crude oil. The small crude oil they drill for this country now, Ibo company. Now they help us drill them. 
So we cannot drill our crude oil, we cannot secure our crude oil, we cannot meet standard of our crude oil. Now, Kaduna refinery. Let's even assume we have enough crude oil to sell to refineries. You see, the Kaduna refinery was designed to refine hard crude. There's something called hard crude. The crude oil we have in Nigeria is called sweet crude. It's a soft one. It's one of the most sought after crude oil. But the Kaduna refinery is not designed so we find so can now refine whether we get or not they go import. So let me not get to where we are at a cross session. The refinery all the places, it don't come. But we don't get good on here, we won't refine. It is well.